All right, everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a self-driving taxi with reinforcement learning. Why reinforcement learning? Well, reinforcement learning uses a set of rewards and penalties to train in optimal behavior on some sort of an agent. So it's accomplished by having this agent explore a space. And at each exploration step, the agent learns the value of different state changes in different conditions. And these values then shape the future behavior of the agent. So examples would include Pac-Man and this self-driving taxi that I'm about to show you. Let's dig into the self-driving taxi code in Python. So how do we build a self-driving taxi with reinforcement learning? We're going to use it to train a self-driving uh, taxi on the most efficient fix this here, train a self-driving taxi on the most efficient routes for picking up and dropping off, dropping off passengers. To start with, we're going to create a driving area grid via the Python AI gym library. And here's a key which shows you what uh, each of these values means. So uh, R, G, B, and Y are pickup or drop off sites. So if you look down here, here's R, G, Y, B. Uh, if we have a blue letter, that's going to indicate a pickup site. So here's our blue Y, which is our pickup point. The magenta letter indicates this is our drop-off site. A solid line means taxi can't go through there. It's a solid wall. And a yellow-filled rectangle means we have an empty taxi, which is what we see here, this yellow guy here. And a green-filled rectangle means the taxi's filled. So we'll import Jim, also random, so we can get a random number seed to start out with. And we're going to use Jim to make taxi v2 environments. We're going to call that streets. And here we've actually gone and rendered that. So what we have here is a 5x5 five five grid, and it's called streets, like we just described. It's defined by 25 possible taxi locations four possible destinations, and five possible passenger locations, which the passenger can either be inside the taxi or at one of the four possible destinations, okay? So this means we have 25 times four times five equals 500 possible grid states, and each of these 500 states will be given a probability for taking one of the following six actions. We can either have the taxi move north, east, south, or west, and it can either pick up or drop off a passenger. So let's use what's called the Q-learning algorithm for our reinforcement learning and assign the following quality points, Q standing for quality, at each state. So a correct pickup or drop off is going to be worth positive 20 points. An incorrect pickup or drop off is going to penalize 10 points, take away 10 points. For each step that we take en route to our destination, we're going to subtract a point and we can't go across walls. So by establishing the initial settings here for our taxi of uh, this grid point of 2, 3, the pickup locations 2, and the destino location 0, and then examining the grid and reward table for this initial state, we wind up with this grid here. OK. So our pickup points Y down here in the lower left corner and R, which is our drop-off point, is in the upper left-hand. So we got the lower left-hand corner and the upper left-hand corner for our, for our route, right? And this is what our initial state looks like. Okay, now let's walk through what this means. So this array here has six rows, right? And each row represents a possible action. So we can either move north or south or east or west, or we can pick up or we can drop off. And each row contains a Q value. So when we're starting out with, the Q value is going to be 1. Okay. The state number, which is going to be a value between 1 and 500, like we just described. The Q points, which is the reward or penalty for taking the action. And whether a successful drop off takes place. 
So since we're just starting out here, we're kind of far away from a pickup or drop off. Obviously, all these values are going to be false, right? So given the starting point, the first row showing us that moving north would put the taxi into state number 368, it would subtract a point and it does not result in a successful drop off. So now that we've walked through what that all means, our next step is to train our taxi over 10,000 simulated runs. And at each step, there's going to be a 10% chance of taking a random exploratory step and a 90% chance of taking an action based on the highest Q value. All right, so um, in my code here, you can see I've got basically three variables which are going to impact uh, how efficient this taxi is going to be. The first one is learning rate, which we're going to start off by setting that to 0.1. Our discount factor, which is... 0.6 and our exploration which we're going to start off by setting to 0.1 and our number of epochs or the number of times we're going to train this thing is 10,000. All right so for taxi run in 10,000 we're going to reset the state we're not quite done yet and so we're going to we're going to pick a random value and based on that random value it's going to either explore a random action or it's just going to go ahead and use the action with the highest Q value. All right and then we're going to assign Q values here and this is sort of the the crux of the learning algorithm this line of code here and it's just going to assign the new Q value to the Q table there and our state is the next state that we've determined. So what we're left with at the end of that is a table of Q values for guiding our optimal next step. Let's take a look at the values for our initial state. This is our Q table for that state. And if you look at this, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six possible actions. Which one has the highest value? Well, even though they're all negative, you can see that one of them does have a highest value, which is negative 2.36 out of all these. The, so the fourth value says we want to move west. That's the highest value. And it makes sense so since moving west is our most direct path towards our destination, which is the pickup pick point in the lower, uh, well, the southwesternmost point on the grid from our initial state. So now let's animate the taxi's behavior given our learned Q values. Okay. And let's run through all this. I'm going to go ahead and run all the cells. And we'll give it just a second to actually go ahead and learn. I'm going to pause the video and then resume it once it kicks back up again. Oh, we actually started. Okay, so now look at this guy. Look at our taxi. Drop off. Boom. Success. Now we got to go to R to pick up a guy. Boom. Green means he's got a guy in there. Boom. Drops him off a G. All right. Go taxi. Go. Okay. We just picked him up and dropped him off. Boom. Doing great. Doing great. Okay. Now he's going to pick up down there at Y and drop off at R. Okay. Cool. So now, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to clear out these sleep values so that instead of just doing a nice animation, it's going to blaze through this to see what the average number of steps are per trip so that we can see how can we most if, how can we make this taxi learn so that its actions are the most efficient. Okay, so. Uh, Stop the code. All right. Um, and just to give us a large enough sample size, I'm going to say we're going to take 500 trips. All right. OK. OK, we're going to comment out that sleep value there and the sleep value here. All right. And I believe 
That should do it. Now let's run and see what happens. Okay, I'm just going to pause the video right quick so it can step through these 500 steps. Okay, we're back. So I actually had a little bit of difficulty completing 500 trips. I just ran out of processing power, which is pretty sad, but hey, that's what happened. So I just dropped it down to 400 trips, and we still have a pretty good sample size with 400 trips. It took us 13, on average, 13 and a half steps to complete a trip. Now let's see if we can improve upon that by altering some of these initial values here when doing our training, our Q learning. So instead of a learning rate of 10%, I'm going to adjust that to 50%. And instead of an exploration value of 0.1, I'm going to bump that up to 0.5. And I'm going to run this. Now this actually is going to take a little bit longer, but it did just finish. So Okay, that's different. Now let's run our trip code to see what happens. So what it's doing right now is our agent is exploring, uh, it's actually taking these trips after having already gone through its training. And look at that. So now instead of 13 and a half steps to complete a trip, it only took the taxi 12.6 steps. So definitely improvement there just by altering those those uh, learning values. So that's it for this video. A uh, little bit longer video, but I hope you enjoyed watching it. Hope you learned something and thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.